Good to go.
circumstances she doesn't have a perfect voice she's suffering a little bit of a sore throat this young lady became a bit of a youtube sensation her parents videotaped her i'm going to say sometime around christmas i may be wrong uh of her singing the song from the disney song uh, disney movie frozen all right when i found out about that it touched me i'm honored to have got a chance for her to come before the to now let us meet the teams competing in the championship final. The visitors on the scoreboard, the Oakwood Barons from the TDSSA in Toronto. Number three, Calvin Stoma. Number one, Jim Rose. Number 12, Ron Williams. Number 14, Marina Clark. And number 23, Russell Baker. Head coach of the producer and the new business. The whole team on the scoreboard will be the Thornley Thunder from the York region of the Association.
Check one, two, check one, two. Good evening and welcome to the 43rd edition of the 2014 Silver Fox Invitational here in Stony Creek, Ontario. Salt Fleet High School is the site. The final matchup between Thornley and Oakwood, one of the best teams in all of Canada against one of the hottest teams in all of Canada. Carlin Gay alongside Elias Spia. And Elias, you've been here all tournament long. It's been a fantastic tournament, and you know the Silver Fox is one of the premier tournaments here in Canada, and you're seeing a, a, a fantastic final matchup between two quality teams. Yes, absolutely. I mean, Thorny Lee's been playing at the top of their game. I think they really turned the corner um, over the Christmas break. Uh, there were some ineligible players uh, who were playing with them before who are now out of the lineup uh, for the remainder of the season, and these guys are meshing. The chemistry's there. Uh, they're getting the shots off that they want, and they're playing tremendous ball in the 2-3 zone. An exciting matchup on the wing. It is going to be a guy we've seen play a lot this year, Kadeem Smithin, against a platform, another platform alumni, and Russell Baker, MPH platform that is, that happened on Boxing Day. Both these guys salivating at the matchup, the opportunity to play against each other. You see Kadeem on the ball right now. You know what? Kadeem is, has got to be the most under-recruited player in the 2014 class at 6'3", um, versatile scorer, you know, ability to create plays for others, as we saw there, coming off the screen and getting the ball to Mr. Cameron Creighton for three. Did they count that one? Though? They did. That was a good, good basket. Early on, 3-2 for Thorn Lee. Brody Clark scoring the only basket for Oakwood. <laughs> Thorn Lee in all white, Oakwood in all blue. Here's Baker. Thorn Lee in a zone. And they did a good job of neutralizing Maryville, a game that you saw in the semifinals with that same zone. Oakwood beating Pine Ridge out of Pickering in the semifinals to get here to the final matchup. So Juan Williams matched up right now with Kadeem Smith. Creighton, who knocked down the three previously, watched by Epistola who had a fantastic game in the semifinals. 19 big ones, six three-pointers. He started off six for six from three-point range. Turnover there, a hot pass for Brody to handle. 3-2 early on. I want to get a look, give a little love to uh, a team from Ottawa, uh, Maryvale, who filled in actually last minute for another team who couldn't make it. And um, they played remarkable against uh, against Henry Carr. Knocked down threes from anywhere. Really got all the shots off that they wanted to get. Um, they and controlled the tempo. Uh, they, we seen them for the first time, and I can tell you they they will definitely be jumping into the national rankings after their performance at the Silver Fox. Here's Smitham pulling it back out. Lewis. Creighton, double dribble called on Ken Creighton. It will be Oakwood basketball. Calvin Epistola on the ball. Played this summer for Team Ontario. Williams inside Clark. And Elias, if Thornley is going to have some success, they're going to try to have. They're going to have to neutralize Brody Clark, who has been a terror inside for most teams here in the nation. Yeah, I mean, he's a he's a very smart player. His uh, his size is really great, altering shots, and you know he, he gets a, the easy buckets around the basket. You know. Oh, and there's a, a double dribble call. Double dribble called on Newman there. The second double dribble in back-to-back -back possessions now for Thorn Lee. Coach, Coach Shane James arguing the call there, and uh, we've had a lot of calls argued. I mean, the, refs are not the greatest, I have to say. If we were to rank refs, oh boy, this would not be pretty for him with the refs. <laughs> You're always getting on the refs for whatever reason. Clark, Williams, patience, Epistola for three, knocks it down. 
starting off just as hot as he did in the semifinal. And we want to talk about efficient players. You're looking at this kid, Calvin Apasola here. Every stage that he stepped on, he's been providing uh, great composure at the lead guard spot. He, he hits his open threes, and he, he defends full court. So, I mean, this is a kid that the whole CIS is definitely looking at, and I think he's going to start to attract a lot more interest down south. Um, now, the, the one here's the one thing that coaches usually mention to me. Well, he's kind of small. Yes, he's small, but he plays with his heart on his sleeve, and... He's, he's completely efficient. I mean, you can't, you can't say much negative about a kid like this. Thornley with their third turnover in as many possessions. 5-3 is the score with 3.59 to go in the first quarter. Oakwood in front. And a power plug got kicked out over at the scores table. So they get the possession arrow sorted out, and we're back to game play. Epistol has Williams. This is Russell Baker. Thornley still in the zone. Smith him with length. Got a hand on it, but Clark was able to vacuum it in. Kicked out for three, and Williams knocks it down. And shows a gesture over to Newman. It is 10-3 in favor of Oakwood. Oakwood, a solid defensive performance in the semifinals. We're able to really lock up on Pine Ridge man to man. Smith, Newman. Nothing happening offensively right now for Thor and Lee. This is Newman, watched by Williams. Creighton. Waits for a screen. Baker now on Creighton. In the corner, Newman driving. Smithin for three. Got it! And then that's part of the versatility that he can offer. You know, he works well away from the ball. He, he gets to his open spots and he'll knock down those threes for you. And you know, I'm going to comment a little bit on Dewan Williams. We saw him hit the three in the, in the last possession there for Oakwood. And there's another one from Calvin Apostola. We, I'm telling you, you keep talking about efficiency. This is a guy, this is a player that you want on your team. Knock down those shots. Back to Dewan Williams just for a quick sec. Dewan is a player who has been steadily showing improvement and increasing what he can offer to a team. This year, he's added that three-point shooting element, something that he wasn't confident in last year. And here we go, here we go, got him rebounding. You know what, one thing I'd like to see him do more of is be able to bring up the ball himself there rather than relying on, on Calvin all the time. Baker for three, too strong. Tapped and vacuumed in by Shepard. Newman to Smithen. Back to Shepard. Here's Newman. They swing it around. Creighton now on the rock for Thorn Lee. This is Smithen. Shows the up fake in the lane. Smith him to the rim. And a great finish with his offhand. What do you think he's going to end up with in this game? I'm, I'm thinking somewhere around 30 points. Tough, tough scorer. And you look at him, slight frame, but he's able to take contact and finish as you saw just right there. 13 8 Oakwood early on here. In the game, 136 to go in the first quarter, and a foul by Kadeem Smith. Baker will inbound for Oakwood. Here's Williams, who Elias just spoke about. Now Baker. Williams, top of the key for three. Too strong. Good hustle play there. Rebound picked up by Ahmet. Pesola pulls it back out and will look to run a set as Thornley sits back in a 2-3 zone. Williams this time from the corner. Too strong. Gets his own rebound and attacks. Blocked by Creighton on the ground and a travel there as Williams rolled over, diving to the floor. You like to see the hustle, but unfortunately for him, ends up being a turnover. Stay composed, Dewan. Stay composed. That's what, that, that, that's what, that's what coaches want to see from him at the next level. And that's part of the, his mental maturation. Um, once he gets that part of his game you, we, up, we will see his stock rise as well as a player. He's a very emotional player. Definitely wears his heart on his sleeve when he's on the court. Sometimes you feel like the team does feed off of it, though. Now Oakwood showing a zone. Smithin. In the lane, forces it up and gets the soft roll. 13-10 Oakwood, 35 seconds to go here in the first quarter. 
Clark to the rim. He's such a powerful player inside that you really have to defend him kind of by committee. Definitely. I mean, Brody has a, has a big body. He's, he throws his weight around once he's in there. And, you know, if you don't, get, if you don't beat him to that spot and take the charge, he's likely finishing with the bucket or getting to the line. Foul on Emmanuel Shepard. Clark knocks down the first. 14-10 in favor of Oakwood. 30 seconds on the clock. Second one rims in and out. Rebound by Marvin in here. Smith in heel. Likely hold for the last shot. As Thorn Lee will try to cut this lead down in half. Or at least to three if they're... Sorry, check that to one if they're able to knock down a three. Newman. Smithin checks the clock. Five on the clock. Smithin step back, forces it up. A tough shot. And that's how we end the first quarter. 14 10 the score in favor of Oakwood. As we mentioned, both these teams winning relatively easy games in the semifinals. Oakwood defeating Pine Ridge and Thorn Lee defeating Maryville out of Ottawa. But you were still impressed with the team out of Ottawa. Definitely so, man. We got a Juku prospect, uh, uh, Shymar Brewster, a 6'3 guard, um, who creates off his dribble. Uh, he gets his teammates involved. And I just really like the, the organization of the team, the coaching. Uh, everyone seemed composed. And after I saw them against that, that first game against Henry Carr, they knocked off the number two team in the country right out of this tournament. After I saw them come off the court with no celebration, that's when I knew these guys meant business. Yeah, they kind of felt like they, they really deserved that win. They earned it. And kind of made a name for themselves here on the national stage here in this tournament. And a, and a late addition to this tournament. And really opened some eyes. A team that we may see down the line in offset. It's, it's, a, it's a, you know, a good possibility. They, are, they got a perfect record in their league right now in Ottawa. And they're actually set up to play uh, Immaculata, a team uh, with Jacques Lacusa, uh, later this, uh, actually right after the weekend on Tuesday. That should be a good matchup there. Jacques Lacusa, of course, nicknamed the Jack of All Trades, was at the MPH platform on Boxing Day. Start of the second quarter, 14-10 in favor of Oakwood. Oakwood in the blue unis. Thorn Lee in all white. This is the championship matchup, the 48th. Sorry, 43rd edition of the Silver Fox Invitational. Oakwood back to that man-to-man. -man. The drive inside. Clark picks up the foul. Bucket is made by Brown. Now, I think X-Factor in this game has got to be Marvin uh, Nadi. He is grabbing boards. You know, he's getting he's getting really busy down low, trying to keep Brody Clark there out of the post. I think the beautiful thing about him now is that he has identified his role on this team, and he's sticking with that. I think once he gets the footwork uh, ready for the next level, this guy's a six nine uh, six nine center that would be perfect for the CIS. Baker to Williams, back to Baker. Thornley sticking to that two three zone. Gonna try to neutralize the big man Brody Clark inside. Here is Baker. Inside. Clark, foul line extended, able to hit. 16 to 12. Seven minutes to go here in the second quarter. Smith and watched by Williams. We thought the matchup would have been Smith and Baker, but it seems as though Dewan Williams has taken upon himself to guard Kadeem. It's the matchup I just mentioned. They go inside. That's Shepard. Back out to Smithen. They look to do two-man game. Smithen. Spinning. Left-hand push. No good. Rebound inside is Brown. Blocked by Epistola. And he stepped out of bounds. Thornley basketball. Now, we got to see some better off-ball movement in that, in that Thornley offense. I mean, guys are getting pretty stagnant right now. It's, it's too early to be getting stagnant. Feet got to be moving off the ball. You got to be ready to score, ready to catch, ready to make a move. Inbound there, almost stolen as Shepard able to rip it out of the paws of Baker. San Felix just checking in, crossing over, now gets to the lane. Floater is left short. Rebound to Brown. 
sloppy play right now for Thorn Lee, and they end up with a foul. It's going to be Brown picking up his first. Still 16-12 in favor of Oakwood. Oakwood an inbound in front of their own bench with six minutes to go here in the second quarter. Baker, Williams screen for Epistola. That's a two, no good, tapped up. Both teams battling and Gennady pulls it down. Smith in behind his back. Brown inside, Samuel got the roll. Check that, that's Shepard. Emmanuel Shepard, 6-7 forward. Grade 12 kid. And you mentioned the improvement, E, that as Brody Clark is able to finish, you mentioned the improvement that Marvin's made to his game. Well, Emmanuel has done the same. Uh, I mean, definitely. Both of them are, are still fairly raw. However, I mean, I'm, this, these are the type of guys I'd be willing to take as a project for the next level. Um, I think giving them, giving them one year, two years uh, to really get their footwork down pat, they, they'll be rolling. Here's Brown on the rock. Watched by Rose. The switch is now on Clark. St. Felix up fake, spinning, nowhere to go. Good defense there by Oakwood and Smithen. Showing the leadership that he is kind of still developing on this team, pulling it back out and says, slow things down. Now he'll drive. Gennady, no good. Rebound inside Brown. Put it down and gets called for the walk. Shepard checking out. Tristan Newman checking back in for Thorn Lee. 21 in white. 18-14 here, halfway through the second quarter. Uh, Calvin Pistola. Pistola inside. Clark, nice move. Can't finish. And here comes Smithen on the push. Kadeem Smithen right to the rim and one. Kadeem Smithen. That's where he strives, man. That's what he does. He In transition, he's hard to stop because he's got a series of moves that he can put on the defender. And, you know, if the defender is running backwards, it's going to be a tough guard. He's going to get he's gonna get to the basket, and he's going to finish with contact. You call him with 30. We'll have to check what he has at halftime. But if he continues to make moves like that to the hoop, he may just end up with 30. 18-17 here in the second quarter. And so far, the zone by Thorn Lee has stopped a little bit of Oakwood's offensive momentum. Brown ahead, St. Felix to the rim. Gets it to go, Thorn Lee in front. That was a great take, and, uh, and uh, although he made the bucket, I'm gonna applaud Calvin's defense there, trying to just rolling back with him, keeping his arms straight up, making sure he doesn't get that and one. Baker for three and the foul. Oakwood needed that basket in the worst way. And Baker is able to hit it. We'll have a timeout by Oakwood. 21-19, 3.56 remaining in the second quarter after the Baker three-point field goal. Got the foul, and he'll go to the line for the four-point play. Saul Sanchez will check in at the next dead ball. You know what that means, right? You know what that means. That means they're going to set up Sol Sanchez in his corners. He's going to get to his spots, and he's going to knock down some threes. Otherwise, I, I don't see another reason for him to be on the floor right now. Um, Sol is a specialist in a way. He's at, He's been progressively adding to his game, his dribble drive game. But this guy's on the floor for one reason, and that's to knock down threes. 6'3 guard, grade 12. And his head coach, Anthony Miller, calling his name to get in the game. He's going to be number 21 in blue for Oakwood. And... Kind of need shooters to kind of give Brody space inside to operate as Thorn Lee is going to the zone predominantly here in this game to try and neutralize paint points. So out of the timeout, we'll go straight to the free throw line with Russell Baker. After hitting the three, got fouled, and it will be an opportunity for a four-point play. After Thorn Lee took the lead, for the first time in the second quarter. 21-19 is the score, 3.56 to go here in the first half. Baker at the line, shooting one. 
And it hits. 22-19. Here's St. Felix. Smith and watched by Williams. This has been the matchup throughout the night. I'm actually a fan of this matchup. I like Dewan Williams on him. I think he, you know, he makes him Kadeem really uncomfortable. Makes him think twice before taking that first dribble. He's got great lateral speed. And, he, and you see here, he's communicative. He's got his hands up. It's a great defense by him right now. His great size as well to be able to kind of bump Kadeem off his spot. So good play by Coach Miller inside of St. Felix. Tough take right at Brody Clark. And Clark didn't get called for the foul as he went to hands straight up in the air. Smithin, this time Clark will be called for the foul. Hit him with the body underneath. Smithin getting to the line here. However, I, I do question that take to the rim. Um, I mean, unless we know in advance that the ref's going to call that. He's coming in on two and three triple coverage. I don't know about that take. You may not know about it, but he, he, li he seems to like it. Gets to the line, knocks down the first free throw. Second one on the way, 22-20. Smith him trying to make it a one-point game and does. Epistola, Baker. It seems as though Oakwood wants to speed the tempo up a little bit. We try to beat Thorn Lee back on their side of the floor before they lock into the zone. Rose for three. Short. Clark tipping it up to himself, and he gets fouled on the shot attempt. He'll go to the line for two. Fouls on Marvin Gennady. That's his second. And the second time tonight we see Brody at the line. First free throw long for Clark. Checking in for Thorne Lee Creighton. Cam Creighton, who started the game, went to the bench and now back in. And Brody is a player who is being recruited by uh, some of the Ivies. Uh, in the NCAA, as well as a lot of the OUA. Um, he, you know, he's the type of player who's going to come in and be able to contribute right away as long as he's healthy. We know he's had some health issues in the past, but um, Bodie's definitely a guy who, who can come in and you know produce on the boards and, and pick up some garbage points and you know create, just be energy for the team. Always talking defensively as well. Coaches love to see that. Here he is, closing out on Shepard. Shepard to the rim. Brody doing a good job of not fouling that time and still contesting the shot. Here comes Oakwood the other way. Baker. The kick out. Episola for three. In and out. Smithin pulls it down. And Smithin will wait for the rest of his team. Shane James will call timeout with 2.08 remaining here in the second quarter. 23-21 in favor of Oakwood. In a game of runs so far, Oakwood started off jumping out early. And a very veteran squad over on Thorn Lee's side. A lot of guys who are in their fifth year playing minutes, so they've been there before. They know not to panic getting down early. left here before the half. Me Thornley basketball. Creighton will then enter. The solo watching him. Here is the matchup we have kind of spotlighted. Williams and Smith. Creighton. That's a two. Too strong. And Calvin picks it up. Here comes Rose the other way. I'm going to look for a quick post for Brody. Oh, they should have gave it to him. And they're going to call Emmanuel Shepard on the foul. That's beautiful positioning there by Brody Clark. By the, the weight advantage there. And he's going to quickly get Marvin in some foul trouble. Emmanuel there. Here is Brody on the perimeter. Williams. Baker. Back out. Williams. They want to go inside to Brody. They do this time. Brody to the rim. Not much you could do against that. 
There it is. He's going to use his body. He's going to throw around that weight. And you know what? That is one of the deficiencies there for, for Emmanuel. Sorry. Steal there by Baker. Bad pass, Smithen. Baker to the rim. Gets him with the Euro. Beautiful Euro step by Russell Baker. 27-21. A minute to go here in the first half. Oakwood in front. Thorne Lee. Kind of on the ropes now. Two possessions. They've struggled. It's a Smith and three. No good. Grabs his own miss. And we'll pull it back out for another three. In and out. Rebound Shepard. Last touch, they say, by Oakwood. Thornley basketball, 45 seconds remaining here in the first half. Smith in the trigger man. Newman. And the foul. Able to get the roll. And Brody picks up his second. You know, outside of Brody Clark, there isn't a lot of size on this uh, on this Oakwood team. And if, if the plan, if the game, part of the game plan at least is to get Brody in some foul trouble, uh, it's going to be much easier to get to the rack and finish more at the basket. 43 seconds left. You wonder if uh, Coach Miller will take Brody out of the game. He does. Sanchez checks in to replace him. Another re offensive rebound here for Thorn Lee. And they'll hold for the last shot. 27-23 in favor of Oakwood. Thorn Lee has the basketball as the closing seconds in the first half tick down. Shepard, top of the key. Brown, Creighton, open. This is a three. Too strong. Rebound Brown. Last touch by Oakwood. 18 seconds to go now in the first half. St. Felix will check in, replacing Shepard. There's Creighton. Coach Shane James yells out from the bench, one shot. Creighton, as his bench counts down to the rim, floater, no good. Rebound Williams, gets a shot up, nowhere near the basket, and that's how we'll end the first half. 27-23 is the score after one in favor of Oakwood. Thornley and Oakwood in a close, close battle. It's going to be an exciting second half. We'll take the quick break here at half and be back with more. You are watching the championship game of the 2014 Silver Fox Invitational.
Check one, two, check one, two. Mike, check one, two, Mike, check one, two. Back we are here for the second half action. 2014 Silver Fox Invitational, the final between Thornley and Oakwood. Carlin Gay alongside Elias Spiet of NorthPoleHoops.com. Alongside my man Zane of Ill Minds Media. It's been a close one here in the final E. 27-23 in favor of Oakwood. Oakwood in the road blue. Thornley in the road in the home white. And Thornley really has neutralized Oakwood's offense with their zone. But Oakwood's done it in the man-to-man. -man, so it's been a battle of two different things. But yeah, I mean, um, offensively, outside of Kadeem being, being able to work off the dribble, um, that's where Thornley's a little limited. He's the one who creates that offense. So as long as they keep it out of the hand, they doing a good job. But, um, I think they're in, they're in good position. You mentioned Kadeem Smith. In. He leads the way with 15 points in this one. The high man for Oakwood is Brody Clark with 12. But he also has two fouls. And we mentioned, we were talking off air a little bit about how important it will be to keep the two big men in the game. Emmanuel Shepard has two fouls, and Brody Clark. Emmanuel Shepard and Marvin Gennady both have two fouls. Brody Clark also with two. An offensive foul being picked up there. Good job there by Russell Baker to slide his feet. If, if both guys end up coming out of the game with fouls, I mean, this is, this is where it's going to get a little more even. If we have all guards on the floor and they're rebounding, then, you know, Ball's up in the air, it can go either way. But um, Marvin's length, I think, with, with, they got both guys in right now, both Eman and Marvin. Marvin is number five there. You got Brody Clark going over the back. Got lucky he didn't get called there. Emmanuel Shepard, who we just talked about, with his two fouls, Creighton on the rock. Smithy. Watch by Jordan Rhodes. Smith with a sizable size advantage for three. You go under the screen, you pay the price with Kadeem Smith. Now this is where you got to take advantage. Uh, Jordan Rose on Kadeem Smith is not a good look uh, for Oakwood. Uh, Kadeem got that explosive first step, creates off the dribble. He's going to lose his man, and you know what? He's going to need a, a help defender to come out. Kadeem's great at you know seeing the floor as he's making that penetration and then getting that easy bucket, easy assist. Oh, we were talking about Kadeem Marvin Granati picking up his third foul in this one. A chippy. Baker inside. Clark battling. Back up and puts it in. Brody Clark. Another basket. He has 14. 29 26 in favor of Oakwood. As I mentioned, Oakwood in the Roller Blues. Thorn Lee in all white. Shepard. This is Newman. Newman now watched by Jordan Rhodes. Given to Shepard. Smithen, who has 18 points, now watched by Williams, who did a good job against him in the first half. Newman for three. Air ball. Episola had it knocked out of his hands. It will be Oakwood ball. And there's that penetration dish game again by Kadeem. You know, making sure that his guys get the shots off that they want. You know, shooters got to be ready and they got to be able to finish it at least hit the rim. That was, a, that was a really terrible shot. Clark inside. Hook shot. No good. Shepard pulls it down. And here comes Newman. Head coach Shane James screaming at his team transition. He wants them to get out and go. But a good job there by Oakwood to get back defensively. All five men hustling back. And another turnover from Oakland. Or sorry, check that, Thorn Lee. Now, how are you going to have the ball in the hands of the big men on the top of the key? You're asking for mistakes to be made there. Guards, you got to come out and help them out. Definitely not a recipe for success. Rose. Epistola driving to the rim. Gets his own rebound. And here's Williams. Desperately want to go inside to Clark, but he's doubled. This is Williams for three. If he's hitting that, it's going to be trouble for Thorne Lee. Again, that's, that's the most improved part of his game, is his perimeter, perimeter shooting. Um, last year, he was uh, he was an undersized small forward. And this year with Team Ontario and their coach, uh, Fatih Axer, he's, uh, he's added a ton, ton to his game. Smith had missed the layup. Shepard tried to follow that miss too. And Williams pulls down the rebound. 
Williams. Baker on the drive, tries to feed it to Clark. A tough pass for him to handle, and it's picked up by Newman. And we will push the other way. Creighton. Marvin. Inside, Shepard. Shepard battling on Williams. Jump hook, got the soft bounce, and able to put it in. 32 28 in favor of Oakwood. And Marvin, you heard him there on that possession. While the ball was in his hand, you're yelling, come to it, come to it. And that's exactly what the guards need to do. He knows he's a little uncomfortable with the ball in his hands, trying to handle above the perimeter. Ooh, beautiful play there. Beautiful pass by Calvin on the cut to Brody. Rebounded in the storm league up. And a travel there. A good pass there by Smithen. But Shepard took one step too many. And that's not the first call he's got uh, on the travel. And that goes back to what we talked about earlier. With those guys working on their footwork. Oakwood up by four here in the third quarter. Three minutes and 20 seconds to go. Baker, this is a three. Knocks it down. So Williams hits a three from that spot. And Russell Baker follows up with another three. 35-28. Williams with the steal and puts it in. Oakwood surging. And they're doing it with their defense. 37-28. Three minutes to go here in the third. You can hear the Oakwood bench getting a little excited with chance of defense. Smith in, inside, and the answer by Emmanuel Shepard, and one. That's that craftiness we're talking about. You see that behind the back by Kadeem Smith in, you know, as the second help comes at him, and he just, you know, quick scoop pass inside to Mr. Eman, who's now on the line. 37-30. Shepard with a chance to reduce the lead down to six. And hits. This is where Thornley's got to be very careful. Oakwood now has Russell Baker, Calvin Pistola, and Dewan Williams on the perimeter, all willing and able to hit those three-point shots. This is Pistola. I mentioned he was six of six to start the semifinal matchup. A foul on Smithen as he reached in on Brody Clark. That's going to be Smithen's first. 37 31 in favor of Oakwood. St. Felix coming in for Creighton. And St. Felix uh, transferred from Quebec. Coming in here, and uh, you know, there's kind of a, a tug of war there. Alma Academy, out of Alma, Quebec. Ooh, Brody Clark now hitting. Boy, we got some perimeter shots on the floor. Another three for Oakwood, 40-31. You can see the intensity now picking up on the defensive end for Oakwood. Smith into the rim. Oh, how does he do it? That boy is crafty, man. He gets it done. And this is, this is part of the reason why my mind is boggled by how under-recruited this kid is. If this kid ends up playing in the CIS, we're looking at Rookie of the Year talk, right? In preseason. Big statement there by E. That's a huge statement, but he is a, an extreme talent. Kadeem Smith, as you mentioned, under recruited. He's here in his fifth year for Thorn Lean. He needed a guy that needed the extra year, really. Definitely, he's, he's you know what he's added mass. He still can add mass, but he's he's put on about 12 pounds uh, over the summer, and um, he's proven himself over at the AAU circuit on the AAU circuit. We, we watched him in Indiana, we watched him in Florida, and um, he's been consistent. That's one thing you gotta love about the kid, and and this is you know he's in that range of uh, low to mid major programs. Looking at him, interested in him, um, you gotta put that offer on the table. This guy's a steal. He really is, and he's really a dog on the court. And I mean that in a good way. He doesn't give up on any game. doesn't matter the score. He really has a high compete level. And right now trying to will his team back from a seven-point deficit here in the third quarter with two minutes and 12 seconds to go. Oakwood up 40-33. There they are with the basketball. They've hit three threes here in the third quarter. Williams has hit one of them. Watched by Shepard. Epistola for two. No good. Smith in attacks and grabs the rebound. 
Thorn Lee looking to push the other way. And a good job, Oakwood once again getting back defensively. Smith in. Watched by Baker. Baker did a good job of fighting over the screen there. Brown, that's a two. Way off. And a Pistola coming the other way. Williams. This is a three. That would have been an and one opportunity as the foul was underneath. Clark was grabbed. And I believe that's on Gonadi. And if it is, that could be number four for him. Shane James electing to keep him in the game. This is Williams. Clark. Pistola moves the basketball to Baker. They want to go inside to Williams. Baker, and a good shot by Smith in picking up the offensive foul. 40-33 is the score in favor of Oakwood. 1-17 to go here in the third quarter. And Russell Baker wondering why that was called a charge on him. Smith in with a big smile on his face after picking up that charge. Crossing the line. Two guys who battled at the MPH platform, battling here at the Silver Fox Tournament, and a frustration foul there for Baker. Two quick fouls on back-to-back -back possessions, and Sal Sanchez will come into the game. Baker will sit. you got to be more composed, man. This is, these are the situations that they need him in the game. And the coach is trying to talk to him here, and he's, you know, he... He's showing that lack of composure we've seen in the past, and that is a vital aspect of his game that will either drop your stock, this is for any prospect. You need to be able, you never know who's watching in the gym. You need to be able to show that you're mature enough to, you know, to pick yourself back up and, and get focused. That next play mentality. And right now, picked up two fouls kind of unnecessarily. Battling inside is Shepard, and gets possession that time. Last touch they say by Oakwood. 40-33 in favor of Oakwood. Thornley on the basketball with 44 seconds to go in the corner. Inside. Marvin Gennady and one. Foul on Dewan Williams. Clark saying, my bad, hitting himself in the chest, looking over at his bench, saying, that was my fault. He'll sub out of the game right now. Samuel will check in. Five-point game. Gennady will have an opportunity to make it a four-point game. Short on the free throw rebound, Cal. 40-35, Oakwood. 35 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Clark, a nice cut there by Brody Clark, able to move without the basketball. And uh, yes, definitely, and I, and I commend, I commend that foul. I, I appreciate when a guy is willing to take a foul, you know, to make sure that that bu bucket's not going in. And you know what? That's a two that could have changed this game to a, a seven-point lead. So perfect timing. Clark hits the first free throw as the gym came to a silent hush. Knocks down both. Back to a seven-point lead for Oakwood. 31 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Thor and Lee might hold for the last shot here. Williams making it tough right now for Smith to come to the basketball. Brown. Back out. Gennady. And finally the ball gets in Smith in's hands with 10 seconds to go in the third quarter. Williams on him. Smith in. Gets the screen. Smith in. Clark on him. Step back. Jumper. Short. Rebound inside. And that's how we'll end the third quarter. 42-35 in favor of Oakwood. Brody there picking up some clutch free throws near the end to extend this one to a seven-point lead. And, you know, on, on that play there, that last possession, you really got to try to isolate Kadeem and, and get him to work one-on-one. -on -one. He might even get a foul there. Trying to do it, but... Oakwood did show good defense that time. Williams made it tough for Kadeem to, first of all, catch the ball, let alone 
do anything when he had it. I mean, the guy, the guys in the middle there, uh, both both E-Man and Marvin, need to recognize that you know time's running down and this, the ball is in the hands of our go-to guy. We got to clear up, you know, move, move our guys over to the other side of the floor and open up space for Kadim to operate. So the final eight minutes of this tournament here in the fourth quarter of the 43rd edition Silver Fox Invitational, a tournament that's been going on for a very long time here in Hamilton and Stony Creek area. Last year's winners, Holy Trinity, won this one. And this year, it will be either a team out of Toronto, Oakwood, or the team out of Toronto as well, for Lee. Both teams had somewhat of a tough path to get here. We played some tough teams, but made it look easy. And now, really, the two best teams in this tournament are playing in the finals. I mean, it couldn't have ended better. This is exactly, I think, what the tournament conveners, the fans... Uh, and these two teams obviously w wanted it. They wanted to meet each other in the finals. And this is a this is not only a bragging rights. This is uh, you know trying to grab clutch over that higher spot in the North Pole Hoops national rankings. Talk about that in a team. Uh, speaking of Oakwood, arguably one of the best teams in Canada, and we're watching a team in Thorn Lee, arguably one of the hottest teams in Canada. You mentioned that they have played very well in the second half of the season as Brody Clark. Makes the layup there to extend the lead to nine points. But Thorne Lee might have their flame extinguished here by a very tough Oakwood team who was at one time ranked number one in the MPH top 25. Smithen, that pass to no one, but he stepped on the end line anyway, so it will be a turnover. Oakwood basketball. Critical time here for Thorne Lee right now. Down nine. Early in the fourth, they can either win or lose the game right here. And yeah, you definitely need to be able to make a stop on this possession. Oakwood has been known to make runs in the fourth quarter that really need to choke out their opponents. There we got Calvin Epistola in transition on his own. Nobody filling in there, no, uh, nobody taking a foul, nobody trying to make a stop. And this could get out of hand in these next couple minutes if uh, Thornley can't make a stop on the next possession. They also need to score the basketball. Smith, he's done most of the scoring thus far. Williams on him. Smith in driving, nice pass inside, and Shepard has been a beneficiary of some gorgeous passes by Smith. In. Put the plays aside, get the ball in Kadeem's hand, and let him do his thing. He's the guy who's going to create for you off the dribble, and he's the guy who can create for himself. Everybody else, spot up, be ready to shoot, be ready to catch and drive. Just like that is Brody Clark. Maybe taking your advice as he knocks on a three. 49-37. Timeout Shane James and Thorne Lee as the lead swells now to 12. Here we go. Got the Oakwood boys fired up. Went on a little run here. And this is this is where they step on the gas. This is where Thorne Lee's really got to be careful. This is what makes up one of the best teams in the nation. When you talk about that number one spot, St. Mike's obviously holds it right now. But as we mentioned, Oakwood was there at one point. And uh, we were talking off here. This offset is probably going to be one of the most competitive offsets that we've seen in quite some time. A lot of teams have a case that they can be the number one seed in offset and not only be the number one seed, but a team that could win it. Definitely. I mean, uh, St. Mike's, I think, at this point, and Oakwood are uh, the two top teams in the country. And after that, there's a little bit of a drop off. And, and then you got Henry Carr, um, who's showed a little bit of a slump, lack of composure. Um, losing to a you know a much weaker team out of Ottawa, um, I mean I, I I think I think it's in the hands of one of these two teams. So 49-37, 6:33 to go in the fourth quarter. Oakwood up by 12, and right now surging, trying to put their foot on the throat of Thorn Lee. Shout out to my guy, Jeff Zauner, head coach at St. Mike's. Hopefully we got these audio, audio situation uh, fixed up for you. Smithing on the rock. As I mentioned, he's been doing most of the damage for Thorne Lee. He's going to need some help. He might get it from Creighton, who knocks down the two. Lead back down to 10. You know what, Carlin? When we're talking about some of the best teams in the country here, 
Um, a lot of it lies at the leadership of their point guards. I mean, when we're talking about Oakwood, we're talking about Calvin Epistola, uh, the young guns for St. Mike's, Nelson Caputo, and Godwin Bowen, uh, two of the country's top talents in that 2016 class. That basket won't count as Creighton shuffled the puppies before he let it go. Travel called by the refs, still 49-39, 5.55 to go in the game. Back to what you were saying, we do have a lot of talented point guards here, not only in Ontario, but across the nation. Klakusa, another guy who's a very talented point guard. And we're seeing two here in this game, not to mention the two guys at St. Mike's. You can make an argument, best backcourt in the country with those two guys. Epistola for three. All tournament long, he's been knocking down the long ball, 52-39. Smithen to Creighton. Creighton, they're looking for Smithen again. He pulls it back out. Shane James yells a play in. This is Creighton to the rim. Oh, an acrobatic layup by Cam Creighton. 52 41 now. But Thorne Lee needs stops. Rose, Epistola, shows the ball, drives, rolls for three. Good ball movement there by Oakwood. They just couldn't get the bucket. And here comes Newman the other way. Foul there by Calvin. Got his hand caught in the cookie jar as Smithen was trying to blow by him. Still plenty of time here in this game. But right now in this fourth quarter, Oakwood has been able to get whatever they've wanted on the offensive end as Russell Baker checks back in. Here's Creighton. Newman, Smithen for three. No good. Rebound Baker. And here comes Calvin. Slowing the game down. Oakwood did this in the semifinal against Pine Ridge, and they ate up a lot of clock, spreading the floor, and forcing them, forcing Pine Ridge then to foul. Thorne Lee's gonna have to do the same if they wanna get back in this game. As we approach the four minute mark, Calvin drives. Clark, they're not even gonna look at the rim, they're just gonna play hot potato with the basketball. A lot of, t a lot of teams, a lot of fans, a lot of coaches will tell you that this is a cheap style of play. Uh, when we're talking championships, this is not cheap at all. This is smart basketball. You want it, you know what? You want that ball back? Play some pressure defense. Force your guys out. Eventually, Oakwood's either going to turn over the ball or they're going to get fouled as they just did now and eventually get to the line. Shane James realizing that, then telling his team they need to trap. And thought there for a second that Oakwood was going to call a timeout. They decide not to. Now the timeout given as Williams couldn't inbound the basketball. 52-41, 3.49 remaining in the game. You mentioned a lot of coaches are going to be saying this is a cheap style of basketball, but it wins. Yeah, this, is, this is smart basketball. I mean, if a, guy's, if a guy's on defense want to come out, then feel free. You know, pressure the ball. If you're a coach, how do you combat that, though? It's, it's a very tough no-shot clock, obviously. At high, at high school basketball at the Ontario, in the province of Ontario, so they can do this. They can, what I like to call, kneel the football and uh, make it boring for fans, but they're up. How do you combat this? Well, you definitely got to make sure that you do a good job of denying everybody else from catching the ball. Um, in this situation, the ball will be in Calvin Epistola's hands for most of the time, the most trusted and, and you know, coveted point guard on this team. Um, and, and you know what? Event, you're going to have to foul. You're going to have to get them on the line and try to get the ball back that way if you don't pick up a steal. Fouling this team is tough as well as they do have a lot of pretty good free throw shooters. It'll be Oakwood basketball. They just called timeout as I couldn't inbound. Thornley trying to make a comeback. 
after Oakwood came out, guns blazing here in the fourth quarter. Baker will inbound. Get it into Calvin. There's a trap, and he called over and back, but it really was a travel. Anthony Miller now arguing the call. The call was over and back, so let's see what the refs do here, because it was either a travel well, it was a travel. There's no either. It was definitely was a travel, but he called over and back. Now they got the correct call of travel. See, now I don't like that. The ref who made the call called over and back. And you know what? If, if it wasn't over and back, it's not like the whistle was blown by the other guy to call the travel. Um, uh, you know what? You go with the call that was made. If it wasn't an over and back and the refs, the refs come to an agreement that it was not, then it should still be Oakwood ball because the travel was not called originally. Here's Newman. Shepard, Creighton, they're trying to get it inside to Gennady. Shepard, it's not his shot. And held underneath. Oh, they count the end one. Tristan Newman. The foul is going to be on number 14, Brody Clark. And they count the basket. Wow. Very, very bad uh, continuation call there by the ref. If I was actually called on him trying to get position rebounding, he came down, then finished the play, and they call it and won. Missed the free throw, so I guess the ball doesn't lie. 52-43. A tip there by Creighton. It will remain Oakwood basketball. 319 to go in the game. Gennady will apply some pressure on Baker. Shane James putting some length on the basketball. Gennady is 6-9. Williams in the backcourt. Gets it to Rose. Baker. And they'll pull it out. Thorn Lee on him. Rose, the back out. Epistola was pushed by Smithen. We're now in the bonus. Three minutes to go in the game. It's going to be Kadeem's fourth foul. A tough one to take. This guy's not missing at the line. You can, you can bet your bottom dollar. You want to keep the ball in his hands, and he's going to make all his free throws. Able to knock them both down pure. 11-point game, 54-49. Check that, 54-43. And thank you, Calvin, for not proving me wrong on the free throws. <laughs> thought you were going to jinx him. I thought you were going to give him the broadcaster's jinx. Shepard for three, no good, in and out. Creighton underneath. That time he was fouled, but was not called, and they call a foul the other way that will send Calvin back to the line. And as he predicted, he won't miss free throws. Now on offense, what are we looking here from, from Thorn Lee? I mean, the options are... Time is running out. You know these guys are going to keep holding the ball. Are we shooting threes or are we attacking the basket? Are we trying to stop time? Missed the free throw, so there's the jinx. Creighton. Calvin got his hands on it almost with an acrobatic save. Smithen. He's been the one doing everything thus far this game for Thorn Lee. Directing traffic now. Gets it to Newman. Newman on the crossover. Smith in. This is a three. Got touched by Williams. Falling to the ground is Newman. And another foul picked up underneath. I believe this one is on Rose. Thornley also in the bonus. We'll have a one in one situation for Newman. 2.13 to go in the game. 54-43.
Newman knocks down the first, makes it a 10-point game. Can't hit the second, and Clark vacuums it in. Baker in the front court. He gets trapped, dribbles out of it. Now to the rim, kicks it out. Back to Clark. They're not going to take a shot. They're going to force Thorne Lee to foul. Calvin dribbling. Watched by Creighton. The kick in the corner. It's Clark. All the way back out to Rose. Let's call it boring basketball if you want. But it's winning basketball at this point for Oakwood. Most definitely. And uh, Calvin here is he's back to the line. And if you're a coach watching right now, this is a guy that you want on your team. This is a point guard, a 2015 point guard. He'll be coming back for his final year. Um, you see the way he's creating space here on the floor. Uh, he's able to protect the ball, and he, and he gets it done from all over the floor. Since you predicted that he's going to make every free throw, he's now missed the last two. I guess you could call it a jinx. Or end of the game nervousness, which I don't think he has. Been pretty clutch in the past, so I'll give you that. 54 44. 10 point game in favor of Oakwood, a minute 42 remaining. And timeout, Thorn Lee. Possession arrow also going Thorn Lee's way. But as we come to the close of this tournament, what surprised you the most out of watching every game here in Hamilton and Stony Creek? Well, I think uh, a team that will definitely make the biggest jump in uh, our national rankings is St. Mary's out of Kitchener. Um, they have a player, Taloy Simon, who's a 2015 6'3 guard. Uh, incredible score, just plays with a, a lot of freedom in his game. He's, he has a natural, uh, natural feel around the basket, can shoot the three consistently. Um, you know, during a three-point contest that they've had uh, at halftime of every game, he scored the highest, uh, making 20 in a minute. Um, and then, you know, that's just... A sign of where he's at. Um, his game is still developing. The guys around him, uh, like Thompson, uh, Chris Thompson, that is, um, are also developing their game. Jermaine Lyle and, and others. They got a good supporting cast. All their guys will be coming back next year. St. Mary's out of Kitchener, a team you will definitely want to uh, keep tabs on. We go out to Kitchener every summer for the uh, Adidas Top 40 camp. Um, Kitchener is uh, a place that people kind of sleep on in terms of basketball talent but there's a lot of teams out there that stay together for four straight years and become really good basketball teams at the high school level yeah and i think um i think coaches at the next level are starting to realize uh, the type of talent that's coming out of there um you'll see a lot of serbian guards coming out of there as well i don't know what it is whether in terms of population or whatever the case may be but um the area the region is definitely producing talent and uh, the CIS coaches are, are definitely taking notice. Manuel Shepard call for the foul there over the back of Russell Baker. Baker will go to the line to shoot. Oh, we're now in double bonus. A minute 32 left in the game. And the gym comes to a complete hush as Baker knocks down the first. I'm not going to say anything about Baker's free throws. I just hope he makes them all. <laughs> Maybe you should have. <laughs> Misses the second. Splits him from the line. But forces a turnover. Baker pulls it back out smartly. And will run some more clock. Into that short hands of Calvin. And they foul him. And he'll go to the line for two more. 118 left in the game. And it's almost celebration time for Oakwood. Yes, it is. Thornley has had their run. Uh, they have proven that they are one of the top teams uh, to, to reckon with. And they will be playing likely against Vaughn in the, uh, in the region or city, city championships. Um, one team will make it out of there. It'll be a very exciting game. Vaughn has... Uh, the lead in that matchup, one nothing. You saw that one. A th uh, well, it was a thrilling game, double overtime. Uh, Vaughn pulling out the win in that one. The, re the rematch is going to be very uh, highly anticipated one as Smithen knocks in another acrobatic shot to add to his point total tonight's 10-point game. And they'll foul Jordan Rose. And Smithen, I believe, is done 
for the evening. That is number five for Kadeem. He'll definitely be a tournament all-star, though. No doubt about it. I mean, he's averaged over 20 points a game. I'm pretty sure he has definitely over 25 in this one. Um, you know, Kadeem's, Kadeem's their star guy. He's their next level guy. Um, he's, a, he's definitely NCAA bound. Uh, this is a guy that you want to keep tabs on if, you, if, you, I mean, if you're a low to mid-major program. This is the guy you want to offer. So Kadeem leaving the 43rd edition of the Silver Fox Invitational. Another uh, scoring display. He doesn't only score, though. He does find uh, his teammates really well. We saw that a couple of times, feeding Marvin and Emmanuel underneath for easy baskets. Really did it all in this one. But Oakwood was a little too much. 57-46, under a minute to go here in the game. Mm, by no means is this game close to over. I mean, both teams have, I think, two timeouts left. And a couple of threes, you know, can uh, a couple of threes and a steal could change this thing right around. The game is by no means over. And if if that's the type of attitude that your team has, then I think you're in a good position to still, you know, run away and try to steal this one. Trying to make me look like a like look bad here. I I just pretty much wrapped it up, and you're here saying that there's still a chance. Hey man, I got that never quit mentality, and I, I hope these guys do too. It's been an entertaining uh, championship game here at the 43rd uh, Silver Fox, and I'd like to thank. Uh, Jim Weatherby on our behalf, of, on behalf, sorry, of our North Pole Hoops team for having us out here and for um, putting on a great tournament and showing us hospitality. It's uh, really one of the better run tournaments we have in our province. They do a fantastic job here. Salt Fleet has been kind of like a second home to us over the last three days. The Teachers Life Silver Fox tournament as Newman misses the layup. Now can I say it is over? Under 45 seconds to go in the game, 57-46. Calvin will head back to the free throw line where he has lived. You know what? You could say what you want. To me, it's, <laughs> it's definitely not over. No quitting you, my man. No quit. That's why you're my guy. Any predictions on Calvin's free throw shooting here? Or are you just going to leave it alone? I'm going to leave this one alone. Cash money, Calvin. <laughs> Knocks down the first. 12-point game. We talked about Kadeem earning himself a all-star here in this tournament. I think Calvin's done that as well with his play here in the finals and also the semis. Thorn Lee called for entering the lane too soon, so Calvin will get an opportunity to shoot again. Knocks it down this time. 59-46 in favor of Oakwood. Creighton to the basket. Oh, tough layup. We talked a lot about Kadeem Smith, and Creighton is another guy who may stay in this country and play basketball after high school, but he's a solid player there. Well, he's, he's definitely shown glimpses of uh, you know, being able to score, uh, being able to penetrate and create for himself off the dribble. I think he's one of those guys who are, um, are are definitely in that combo position, still trying to find, um, you know, a distinct role. But there's no doubt about it. He'll be playing somewhere in the CIS, I, I believe. Rose knocks down the first free throw. And the second as well. 61, 48, 32 seconds remaining. Shane James takes his final time out of the night. You know, while we're talking about prospects and, and where they're headed and kind of their recruitment, I think it's for the for the online viewers right now who are who are at the high school level. One thing to keep in mind and to realize is you got to find the best fit for your game. Um, everybody's kind of we talked about this often actually. Everybody got the mentality that I got to go down south immediately in order to be successful. One thing you really got to keep in mind as a high school prospect is that if you're the best player in your city right now, then work at becoming the best player in the province and then the best player in the country. Because usually the case is the best player in our country is usually a top 50 guy in the United States. Um, bottom line is their overall talent pool is much better than ours. And diving into that pool will only make you a small fish in a huge pond. 
It's going to be Thorn Lee basketball after the timeout. 32 seconds to go in this game before we hand out medals. Let's see what Shane James called out of the timeout. It's going to be Newman. Good job there to get an open shot for Creighton. That was a three, no good. Rebound inside. St. Felix can't hit. Clark gets his paws on it. Williams and Baker will dribble over the timeline. And Oakwood will celebrate as they are the champions of the 43rd edition of the Teacher's Life Silver Fox Tournament. Again, on behalf of the North Pole Hoops team, I would like to thank Ill Minds Media for coming on through, helping us out with this stream, as well as Jim Weatherby uh, on the committee from the Silver Fox for putting, that, putting this show together. Uh, it's been a great tournament. Next up, we have the uh, Senior All-Catholic, followed by some March Madness coming up. That should be very exciting. It's going to be March Madness here in Canada. Offside will be in Mississauga this year. Your backyard, so it's going to be very intense. As I said earlier in the game, it's going to be one of the most competitive offsides we've seen in quite some time. For Elias Spiet, Zane of Ill Minds Media, I'm Carlin Gay. Thanks for joining us here from the 43rd edition of the Silver Fox Invitational. Oakwood, your champions.